Okay, we've discussed the first aspect of our debate about whether the UPA will survive the summer. I now want to come to the second center stage phase of question this evening. Is the third front a non-starter, a disparate group of allies with no real common ideology? Mr. Akbar, do you believe they'll be able to pull together? India has suffered a third front in the past from every aspect of governance, of the economy. It, it's something that people are very wary about. Can this motley bunch of leaders pull together a cohesive government? Are we discussing the third front of uh, eight, eleven years ago? Or are you discussing UPA two? We're discussing the third front that now seems to be emerging on the sidelines of UPA two. Right. So the UPA two's performance in the last two years, quite distinct and quite differently from its performance in the first five years, by the way, has been one of disparate uh, groups uh, sticking together for no, you know, ostensible purpose than being in power. And that message has gone down to the party. I think the people and the political parties that you see have learned from their own mistakes. They understand that uh, to remain in power, you need a common minimum program. There is nothing actually in common today. You know, you look at this um, alliance uh, that is in, in power at this moment. One important parties, ministers are in jail. One is sulking. The people who have supported the government actually quite willingly. After all, you look at the high point of UPA2, which was a nuclear debate, and the support that it got from all the elements that uh, uh, today would constitute the larger UPA family. And you'll find that they, from uh, uh, unity or unison, it has become tremendous amount of dissonance. But do you believe emerging. the third front is a workable idea? The third front will emerge and work as an idea because it wants to actually uh, be in power, be the alternative source of power. Let Mr. Ayer respond to that. A common minimum agenda. This is not the third front of the 90s pulled together by allies and partners who realize that if there is a common minimum agenda, they can work together. Even in the UPA, Mr. Akbar says, there are disparate allies who don't really get along. They are held together by the glue of power. That same power could hold these allies together in the third term, Mr. Ayer. Rahul, you began this, pro this half of the program by asking, will the 10 governmental chief ministers be able to pull together? And we've now arrived at the stage where we're asking, can they get together? Let them get together if they are going to get together, and then we'll see. But among them is Mamata Banerjee. And Mamata Banerjee knows, whatever Akbar might say, that the number of seats she can win if she's with the Congress is always going to be larger than the number of seats that she could hope to win if she is not with the Congress. That's point number one. Secondly, I don't see the Samajwadi party pulling away from its support base, for it knows that as the Lok Sabha is and the Raj Sabha are today constituted, the number of seats in the Lok Sabha that the Samajwadi party has is almost the same as the Bahujan Samaj party has. And, by the, and, and why should the Bahujan Samaj party wish to go in for an early election in present consideration? No, but we just heard a comment from Akhilesh Yadav this morning, sir, where he said that the third front is a good idea. Is it of concern to you that your allies are veering towards the third front, heading away from UPA too? I'm not in the least concerned. Because we know that in any uh, set, set of uh, parties that come together, there will be both centrifugal as well as centripetal forces operating. And a clever way of running a coalition is to ensure that the centripetal prevail over the centrifugal. And I think that with the lessons of the last five elections behind us, it should be possible for the, for the uh, UPA too to become much more co you know, meaningful and focused. And you can see that, the evidence of that, is in the President's address, which was after all passed by all the uh, parties belonging to the UPA together sitting in the Cabinet. And that is a huge list of programs to present before the nation. And they don't deal with controversial issues like multi-brand retail. They deal very much more with welfare programs and with a corruption-free society in which all political parties have a more or less equal stake.